Hello, everybody. This is Gregory with 5-Minute Catholic Apologetics, where five minutes of your time may get you to the divine. Today, we're going to give you some tips on how to improve your chances of finding a Catholic spouse. Now, before we begin, let's start with a prayer. In nomine Patris et Filii et Spiritui Sancti. Amen. Gloria Patri et Filii et Spiritui Sancto. Sucutora in principio et nuc et semper et secula seculorum. Amen. All right, so of course this is applicable to people who are on dating uh, apps or wanting to meet people organically at a coffee shop. We have a couple of videos here on on this topic, things that you need to know about, about the opposite sex when dating that we don't really think about. We have one, should you date or marry a non-Catholic and so forth. So definitely check those out. I'll try to put them in the banner. So what are some tips? One, Work on yourself. You know, there's a reason why 70% of second marriages end in divorce. See, the first time around, you always want to blame the other person. Oh, it was them. They were narcissistic, controlling, abusive. They cheated, you know, whatever. It was like, and it's so easy to have that kind of 100% their fault and none your fault, right? Because we all want to think that, but it's not, it's not true. It's simply not true. So for those of you who are divorced and annulled, right? Because you shouldn't be dating if you're not annulled. You need to do an inventory on you and be honest and see what mistakes did I make that might have contributed to the demise of this relationship. And certainly if you're, you're dating not to be married, you can definitely do this inventory after that relationship ends. Now, I'll just speak from the male point of view. Men, one of the biggest problems that we have is that we're just not masculine anymore. 60 years of inculcation of effeminate, obsequious beta men. And you see this as, as the father role models on television and television Fortunately, is is the prime cultural influencer on us. So a lot of men just have grown up being kind of wussy. And you need to look at that. What else do you need to look at? Well, addictions, codependence, right? Work on your financial health, work on your physical health. Certainly, this is probably more important for women than for men, because I mean, let's be real, men are visual creatures. So certainly look at yourself and see what mistakes did I make either from, from, from my personality or just actions that might have contributed to this and remedy these. A lot of these come from early childhood trauma. A lot of it does. A lot of our addictions and a lot of our tendencies and idiosyncrasies have to do with that. So maybe go to therapy, look in the mirror and look at some unresolved trauma from your childhood. What else? Lower your expectations. I know people don't want to hear this, but look, guys, if you're 65 years old and you're trying to court the 22-year-old, come on. Yeah, I know Dennis Quaid, who's 73, just married a 27-year-old. I get that, but he has insanely high sexual market value. But if you're the typical man, and look, it's, it's the dynamic that's existed since time immemorial. Older man, younger woman. The younger woman gets the maturity and the financial resources of the older men that maybe men her age couldn't provide. And of course, the man gets more years of youth and fertility and beauty. So it's, it's worked out that way. But, I mean, there are excesses to it. So what, what do I mean by, like, lower your expectations? If you're a 50-year-old man, all right, you know, try to get the 40-year-old or even 38-year-old woman, if, especially if you want to have children. All right, I get that. I understand that. But don't be, don't be going to the 20-year-olds and then getting all mad. Oh, my God, the 20-year-olds are blocking me? They don't want to talk to me? I mean, come on, lower your expectations. Women, I, this is even more of a sensitive topic for women because women have a lot more vanity than men do in, in regards to their looks. So women, you know, if you're 45 or 50 years old, understand that in terms of your sexual market value, it's lower than when it was when you were 22 or 23. And again, you know... It, Sexual market value is not judging you as your worth as a human being, but it's, it's judging your ability to parlay uh, your looks into getting something positive in your life. So most women don't look as good at 48 than they do at 28. So at the same time, lower your expectations. If you're trying to find men who make a lot of money to satisfy that hypergamy that's endogenous in you, uh, of men of your similar age, just understand those 48-year-old men of your similar age are looking at the 36-year-olds. You're competing with 36-year-olds. So I would I would recommend that you date older because older men always want to be with younger women again this is nothing new We're, this is all wired into us but lower your standards definitely expand your horizons expand your horizons so again when i'm talking about what you should be doing the understanding is that you're only seeking catholics okay so you should be on catholic match or if you're on 
Bumble, you can filter by religion, or if you're on eHarmony or Match, you can filter by religion. I don't think I need to make that statement, but just in case I do, you should only be looking at Catholics. Go to the episode, should you date non-Catholics. Remember, by canon law, you cannot without dispensation. But expand your horizons. Let's say you're on Catholic Match. Expand out 500 miles, 1,000 miles. You can filter on that site uh, based on political ideology and even mass preference. So if you want to, you know, Latin mass, super political, conservative woman who has no children, you can filter all that and put how many miles in the age range and then expand your horizons. If you live in a small town or rural area or maybe a very secular part of of the country, I don't know, Vermont or something like that, then expand your, your horizons. Women do the exact same thing as well. Then what else? Maybe God just doesn't want you to be with somebody. I, I know this is hard to hear. And look, you look at places like Thessalonians 5, 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 16, pray without ceasing. You look you know, at what Jesus says, pray, ask, and you shall receive. Knock, and the door will be open. But understand with, with those phrases, there's one in James 2, James 5 is another similar one on prayer. But understand what these mean. If you're praying for, like you're the 68-year-old man praying for the 21-year-old uh, you know, baby daddy or ba- sugar, sugar baby, understand, no, that's probably not in line with God's will. Our, our job, and, and look, there's no harm in praying for the six-foot-four, hunky, 40-year-old man who is really good with tools and, and loves his faith. Uh, women, you, you can definitely pray for that. But ultimately, our job is to align our will with God's will. And the greatest examples of this are going to be Mary's fiat in the Annunciation and Christ in the Garden of Gethsemane. Right? Align our will. So our prayers, you should definitely pray. If you want to be Mary, pray every night or every day, twice a day, whatever. And you're Angelus. Please help me find a good Catholic spouse. But understand, just because you're praying for it doesn't mean you're going to get it. Because maybe God's will is that He wants you to be single and have a single vocation. Paul talks about in 1 Corinthians, and this is where we, one of the places we get the discipline of having unmarried priests, is there is more strength and power in, in being a single person. Look at, look at uh, the, the brothers and the nuns in the convent. I mean, this is a, a humongous gift you are giving to God by saying, I'm going to stay single, and I'm going to offer this up to God, whether you're a divorcee or if you're a 22-year-old woman or a man or whatever it is. So just try to figure out God's will and line your will up to God's will. And this is not just vis-a-vis dating, but in all aspects of our life. So maybe you're not meant to be with somebody. Maybe I'm not meant to be with somebody. And lastly, just be patient. You know, that, that's one of the, the, the fruits of the Holy Spirit. If you look at Galatians, where he lists the, the works of the flesh and then the fruits of the Holy Spirit, under with kindness, compassion, is patience, right? First Corinthians, patience. We have to be patient. So just be patient. And maybe, maybe you'll find somebody good. But the number one thing is work on yourself. There's a reason why 70% of second marriages end in divorce. It's because we want to blame them and we don't want to look at ourselves. So work on your problems because we all have them. We all have tendencies. We all have quirks and we all have a certain amount of codependence and, and other things that we need to work on. And you should want to work on that because when you're a better person, then if and when you do find this person, you'll be a better spouse to them and a better witness to Christ. Guys, please post in the comments. Let me know what you think. If you agree or disagree, please hit the notification, subscribe, and share button. Share with like-minded people. Until next time, take care, God bless, and pray.